us so you see my vision unite the soul so there's no division look into the future we see all seasons aiming for the top but what's the reason hands to the sky and realize we're free we become the legends we were meant to be now open your eyes and you will see i can lead you home just follow me Hi Agents of the Division, Jalo Bastra here once again. Welcome back to our fourth and final installment of the Raid Secrets Unmasked series. This one's been a long time coming and has taken quite a bit of work trying to put it together in a concise yet thorough video for you all. Remember to please like and subscribe for future content such as this series and support the Team Resistance movement as we continue to honor our commitment to helping the community as much as we possibly can. Remember that the second raid is approaching this year and we'd love for you to be part of our journey. So pass this video on to all your friends who play this amazing game as we look forward to sending the love back and answering the call. It's the Team Resistance way. So welcome to raid secret number 4. It's time to unmask the Razorback 1 phase. Are you ready? Let's go. We are ready. Wow! Razorback. The thorn in so many of our sides. We've been there too, you know. At least for our first couple of raids. Many, and I mean many teams, have come here after being battered and bruised by the first three bosses only to get absolutely annihilated. Mostly ending the night in salty exchanges, rage quitting, and even, in some cases, just quitting outright and never attempting the raid again. Then there's that ever elusive promise of a potential Eagle Bearer drop that drives those desperate and eager to hold it in their hands to push and get that completion. But it can be a struggle and I sympathize with you all as like I said, we've been there too. So we're already 7-8 to eight months into the raid and by now almost everyone knows and understands the Razorback mechanics. If you don't, there's plenty of videos on YouTube that will break it down for you and it's not hard to find. This tutorial will not explain mechanics and will assume that you are already a fay with the Razorback map and key positions. It will however help you improve your speed run times and teach you to one phase Razorback at least 80% of the time. I'm so excited to explain this to you and I hope that by the end of this video you will be itching to go and try this out with your squad. Okay, so before you even attempt the one phase in practice, you need to have the right combination of builds. So we'll start here first and break down what is needed to make this even remotely possible. I'm by no means a build master and I don't do build videos, so this will be a general explanation of what is needed. Also, every team that is able to one phase Razorback have a different method and strategy when executing it. So I'll show you our way of doing it. And you are welcome to try alternative ways if you perhaps have a method that works better for your team setup. So you're going to need number one, a tip of the spear. Tip of the spear is needed to pulse enemies, giving everyone in the team a 20% buff to pulsed enemies. And also helps activate the spotter talent for those running spotter. Another advantage is that the survivalist specialization associated with tip of the spear gives teams a 10% buff to status affected enemies which helps a lot at bosses like Boomer and Weasel. Then you're going to need two aces. Now this goes without saying, aces is an integral part of the raid setup as this gives the team double damage on their next 5 bullets. If you want a one phase Razorback, aces needs to be propped, hence the call for two aces. That way, there's always a backup to ensure that aces is propped before the one phase shot. Okay, so we have two demos in our team. Now, having at least one demolitionist in the team is vital, as the fact that they're just there gives the team a 5% damage buff. Demos are great for cleaning up ads, especially those pesky robot dogs, and definitely have a place at Razorback. You're going to need three crit builds. Now this is where the magic happens. You can overbleed Razorback if you can crit on the weak point with attack 50. 
I've seen at least 10 different versions of crit builds for Razorback, but they all have one constant theme. And you can go with any of these variations. The crit build needs to be as close to max crit chance of 60% as possible and as much crit damage as possible. You need damage to health as well as the Razorback main weak point is all health. The actual weapons you use is immaterial as the build is all about being able to crit on your attack 50. This is the crit build formula for when you're constructing it. Number 1. Attack 50 doesn't fall under a weapon class per se. So you want to go for weapon damage in the talents. So things like spark, hard hitting, spotter, composure and vigilance or any combination of this. Number 2. Crit chance and damage in the attributes. And number 3. Damage to health in the mods. The dream is to make a build with 60% crit chance, 100 plus percent crit damage and 10 to 12% damage to health. But that's in a perfect world and requires a ton of farming for the right pieces, which can be time consuming even with the current targeted loot model we have. My build is by no means near that and we are still able to one phase Razorback because of one more important thing. Remember the boomer sing shot theory? It works here too and must be applied here as well. That leads us to part 2. This doesn't always work. As mentioned before, you have an 80% hit rate I'd say. But when it does, it's one of those things that never gets old. Always exciting to witness and a great feeling of accomplishment. If it doesn't work, it's still a guaranteed two phase, which is still highly commendable. This is how it works. You have to open up the razor back on both sides, in the front side 1 and 4, and in the back side 2 and 3. By doing this, you have the weak points exposed on both sides. The TAC 50 crit shot will penetrate the razor back and do damage to the front and back panel at the same time. Now the crit shots work best from the front, as what's been explained to us is that the actual health panels are not fully aligned and it's easier to penetrate both sides if you shoot from the front. In practice we can confirm that this is true and correct, so make sure your three crit players are at the front, side 1 and 4. Placement of the shot is important too, and we find that shooting along the pipe, in inverted commas, is better than shooting the middle of the weak point. It seems that this ties up with the fact that the alignment of the weak points are out. So by shooting above the weak point along the pipe, you're more likely to penetrate the weak point and do damage to both sides. Here's a picture of places to aim that we know are guaranteed to work. The pipe being the dotted line running over the weak point. You could actually hit anywhere within the yellow box shown and it should work. Just don't shoot the circuit board in the center marked with a red X. Some players use the red light inside the panel and shoot that as well with great success. There's a yellow arrow pointing directly to the red light. That's the red light I'm talking about. And that's where you need to aim if you want to hit it. I aim generally along the pipe, whereas Wilson and our team aims directly on the red light. And both methods work equally well. Now a lot has changed since TU6 dropped, in that we are afforded more options to make our builds pretty strong. Razorback health initially was 50 million, but we think it's been up to 60 million since TU6. We unfortunately cannot confirm that because the result summary after taking bosses down doesn't give the correct information anymore and has been bugged for at least 3 months now. Massive please fix this. It's quite an important tool actually when you're learning to one phase bosses as you could normally see how much damage each agent is doing to the boss and work back from there as to how much health the boss actually has 
and in turn make sure you have a guideline figure to work towards when making your build. Anyway, let's just assume for now that Razorback is 60 million. As a matter of fact, we think Boomer Health has also been increased from 33 to 40 million. But let's not split hairs here. What I'm trying to say though is that you should try and make a crit build that ensures you could do at least half the damage. Unfortunately, the Razorback crit shot can't really be tested in the firing range due to the fact that there's too many factors at play when taking the shot. Like what talents are being procced, is aces active, did it go right through and damage both sides, was it a crit, etc. So I'm going to simplify it for you. If you can make a crit build with 60% crit chance and 95% crit damage and let's say 6% damage to health, you'll easily do 30 million damage to Razorback if you're able to penetrate and crit at the same time. And that's where the three crit guys come into the equation. Only two out of the three need to sink and crit and you'll one phase Razorback. The third crit build is serious overkill with damage, but is more there to increase the chances of the sink shot. Sink shot practice should also be done at the beach for the crit guys before you start the raid and can be done with pistols. Remember as explained in the Boomer Sink Shot video that the shot has to look synced by everyone except the players actually taking the shot. We use a countdown 3, 2, 1 shoot when Skagapa hosts the party and Eraz does the countdown 3, 2, 1 shoot. I have to shoot at the T of shoot while our two other crit guys have to fire at the SH of shoot for all three our bullets to sync up. It takes practice but it is easy to replicate once you've got it worked out. Remember also that party chat delay caused the sync to be out so always try running the raid with the same person hosting the party and you'll see that the delay will always be the same which means that the sync delay will always be the same all the time. For example we make sure that Skagapa always hosts the party and by doing that, my delay is always the same every night, which means that I always take my crit shot at the t at the T of shoot, and my shot is almost always synced. The same applies to the other crit guys. Okay, so rolls and positioning. Now this is going to take a bit of practice, but once you keep doing it over and over again, it's going to become motor memory and it will just run smoother all the time. This method works like a charm and I hope it will work for you as well. Jump down from the terminal building and run on the outskirts of the map to your positions, taking NPCs out in the process but not running through the circles as this will spawn more NPCs. When the map is clear, position your agents in this order. Circle 1, crit build A. Outside one, crit build B. Circle four, crit build C. Outside four, on the balcony, a demo with an AR or LMG. Circle two, tip of the spear. Outside two, aces. Circle three, another aces and outside three on the yellow air stairs another demo with an AR or LMG. Generator guys jump in as soon as that happens eight NPCs spawn and it is imperative that they all get taken out before Razorback opens. This is where each pair works as a team to take their two respective NPCs down. NPCs spawn from 8 potential places. So this is where they would spawn potentially for team 1. This is where they would potentially spawn for team 2. This is where they would spawn for team 3. And these are the two potential places that they'll spawn for team 4. And it is the responsibility of the agents assigned to those NPCs to ensure that they are killed before Razorback opens. 
This will allow you time to open both sides and get ready for the crit shot without being bugged by NPCs still floating around the map. Very important. Okay, so the NPCs are down and now it's time to open and expose Razorback's main weak point. Okay, so in the front, outside one and gen four do the vent with SVDs. Gen one does the nade. When the tower is raised, Gen 1 and Outside 1 do TAC 50 on the left weak point. With Aces proc and a crit hit from each player, the weak point will go down in 1 to 2 shots. Then they move into position and take the crit shot at the main weak point. The other crit guy at Gen 4 takes the right weak point down on his own, also 1 or 2 shots with Aces. Then they wait for the guys at the back to open their side as well. While this is being done, the demo at 4 outside is focusing purely on drones and keeping the drones off the crit guys who obviously have very squishy builds and need to not take damage as they need vigilance to be active for the shot. Another way to ensure that all talents are procced and ready for the crit shot is to as the crit player do a bit of self preservation. So use a defender drone and in my case I use a pulse jammer just to get rid of any floating drones before we take our crit shot. Okay so this is what happens at the back. Now remember that this all happens at the same time so that we pretty much expose both main weak points at around the same time and have ample time to take the shot and roll out of the way of the Razorback rockets. Circle 2 or Gen 2 destroys the panel with an arrow, tip of the spear pulses Razorback and shoots drones. Number 2 outside, our aces guy, does the right weak point with uh, TAC 50 and then he uses the SVD on the main weak point and does the prep shot and I'll explain this later. Gen 3, our other aces guy, does the left weak point with the SVD and procs aces for the team and also throws the nade in once the vent is opened. 3 outside does drone control at the yellow air stairs and ensures that the drones are aggroed towards him and in that way he keeps the drones off everybody that's trying to do uh, actual damage to the Razorback. So at any given time you have 3 drone controllers two aces and three crit guys. Now for the moment of truth. So you've been able to expose both of the main Razorback weak points. Now what? Here's a little trick. Razorback will close if you take too long to do damage or if you do 25% damage. There's actually a little indicator in the form of a mini yellow triangle which shows where that limit is. Once you've reached it, it closes. This is where the prep comes in. Heraz on outside 2 with the aces build will prep Razor back by taking off some health but not all 25% of it otherwise Razor back will close. So he quickly uses this SVD to slowly work a bit more off which allows him to potentially proc aces but also control the damage better than with attack 50. When he sees the damage nearing 25%, he does the sync call. 3, 2, 1, shoot. That's when he stops and the three crit guys in front try a sync shot. In theory, all they need to do now is take 80% of the razor back, which requires two out of the three crit guys to sync and razor back will be destroyed. Now for the most part it will work, if it doesn't then it's not a damage problem but rather that the sink is out. That's okay though, it would mean that you'd have to two phase razor back. It's also quite challenging because you have to learn to survive the rockets spewing out from razor back, get back for your boomer and then get back to the circles and start the process over again while trying to keep the map clean. Tricky in inverted commas 
because the crit builds are made for damage and not survivability. But it's not impossible and if you can learn the art of surviving a botched one phase, you'll quite comfortably learn to get into a rhythm of two phasing without any hiccups. The other catch with the two phase is that because the shot penetrated the Razorback, you don't know where all the damage was dealt, so you have to open both sides again. I'd say that about 85% of the time, both sides still have weak points to be destroyed, which means both sides still have health, which in turn means that you still need to try another sink shot from the front. Only one thing changes though compared to the first round, and that is, there is no prep shot done, as the last thing you want is for Razor back to close while you're getting ready for the crit shot. We've seen it all, where damage has been done to the front all the way, or all the back, or mostly a bit on both sides. So open up both sides as you did on the first round, and when everyone's in position, the agent at outside 2 does another countdown, 3, 2, 1, shoot for the crit guys. Even if the shot is not synced on the second try, just one crit build should be able to take down Razorback. Roll back to safety and get back to your panels and complete the boss. Some things to notice and consider when doing damage. Remember now that if Razorback is being prepped, then already 20% damage is dealt even before taking the crit shot. So when the crit sink shot is dealt, and you see Razorback still has more than 50% health, that means that the shot wasn't synced, there was no crit, most importantly, there was no penetration, which means you didn't hit the correct spot on the weak point. So make sure everyone's aiming at the right spot, which is along the pipe. Remember when penetrating Razorback, you are in effect doing double the damage as you are hitting the other main weak point at the back at the same time. Now let's say the shot was taken and Razorback only has 20% health left. It would be safe to say that the shot wasn't synced unfortunately. Like I said, it's still commendable to two phase Razorback, so just continue with it and try again on the next phase. So for the Razorback to be completely destroyed, you need to prep the back just a little using the yellow triangle as a guide on when to stop. And then at least two crit guys need to sink but also penetrate the two weak points by hitting the correct spot. Sounds a bit complicated, but with enough practice and sticking to specific roles, it's very possible to one phase, worst case two phase Razorback, chipping yet again minutes off your completion time. Most people know by now, but if you didn't, mini boomers are not a problem anymore and shooting them in the asshole downs them in 2 seconds. For real. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to keep a straight face here, but it's true. No pun intended. Basically, shoot where there's no armor. Do it, I wanna do it, I wanna do it. Oh, nice. In the asshole, in the asshole. <laughs> So you can get back into your circles pretty quickly if you have to two phase razor back. Step 2. Play it safe initially and get back for your boomer and clear the map before going back into circles for second phase. Two phase is still better than wiping. So make sure everybody's up and the boomers are down before you get back in for the second phase. Step 3. Roll away into cover for the rockets and it won't hurt you as Razorback closes. Since TU6 the spewing rockets do a lot more damage so you need to be careful to stay alive during this phase. So there you have it. The secret's out. One phase Razorback unmasked. As you can see, like with the other bosses, it's not a perfect science and there's a lot left to chance and a bit of luck. You now have the theory and the strategy. Get the builds, rolls, 
and practice in and you'll be able to one phase razor back as well. Here are a couple more examples. Critical systems cover. Three, two, one, shoot. <coughs> Well, that brings us to the end of this video and the end of the Raid Secrets Unmasked series. I seriously hope that you enjoyed it and are able to take something from what we've shared with you. I believe that this will help you and your squad improve your raid completion time, but I also hope that this series has helped you see that as much as speedrunning the raid is possible, it takes a joint effort by all involved to learn the strategy, get the builds right and keep working at it all the time even with all the fails, wipes and retries. I understand a new update is approaching with a new gear system etc. So builds will potentially vary, but it shouldn't make a difference to the strategy shown here and the benchmarks set out for the crit build. So I believe that this information will still be pertinent throughout the update, maybe with some slight variations. Thanks again for all the support and positive feedback from the community. Let me know if this has helped you and your squad better your times and feel free to leave a like or a question in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it as soon as I can. Also don't forget to subscribe for more division related content from me and Team Resistance. Thanks again for watching, greetings and well wishes from Team Resistance. Cello out.